Convolutional neural networks have revolutionized computer vision in the recent past. In the past five years, we have indeed accepted the convolutions or the go-to operations whenever we want to do any task on images, be it recognition, 3D reconstruction, or even image generation. On the other hand, transformers are revolutionizing natural language processing, be it translation or conversational AI. This paper answers the simple question, why not use transformers on images? Now we love it when two fields come together and help each other grow. In this video, let's find out how this potentially revolutionary paper uses transformers to replace convolutional neural networks. Let's have a quick recap of the transformers. The transformer was first proposed in this attention is all you need paper and it is composed of an embedding layer, an encoder and a decoder. At a high level, the embedding layer first embeds each word into fixed size vectors. These vectors are then passed through the encoder which gives an abstract continuous representation. The decoder then converts this abstract representation into meaningful outputs. Unlike recurrent networks or LSTMs, which pr process small sequence of words, the transformers can reference backwards in very long sequence and aggregate context really well. Let's see how they do it. The embedding layer first converts each input word into some form of numeric representation of fixed size vectors. We then add positional information for each vector. If we do not provide the position information, the transformer has no means to understand what comes first and what follows it. The encoder takes these vectors as input. It is composed of a multi-headed attention layer and a multi-layer perceptron. While we are quite familiar with the multi-layer perceptron, the multi-headed attention is a novelty in the transformers. Let's take the example of this sentence, I had coffee, it was nice. For each word in the input, the multi-headed attention learns association with all other words. In this example, it refers to coffee and not I or had. It's the job of multi-headed attention to learn just that. The layer is called multi-headed attention because the input is split into several heads so that each head can learn different levels of self-attention. The outputs of all the heads are then concatenated and passed through the multi-layer perceptron. Let's not forget the normalization layers that are always used in neural networks. The transformer uses layer normalization. Lastly, let's not forget that several layers of encoders can be stacked together to boost the predictive power of the transformer. The decoder in short does the reverse of the encoder with a mask layer within it. We won't go into the details of the decoder as it's not needed to understand this paper. With that in mind, let's have a look at the proposed vision transformer or VIT. Because we are dealing with images and not words, the first step is to divide a given input image into patches. These patches are then sequentially passed through a trainable linear projection layer. Now this plays the role of the embedding layer. This layer outputs fixed size vectors. Position informations are then added to these vectors and fed into the transformer. Now you can notice an additional input to the transformer, which is the class embeddings. This idea is purely inspired by the BERT model. Note that the encoder is pretty much the encoder from the standard transformer architecture that we just saw. It is the multi-headed attention, multi-layer perceptron coupled with multi-layer normalization. Lastly, the classification head is attached to the output of the transformer with which you actually get the output classes from the network. 
The linear projection layer can be any network. For instance, it can be replaced by several layers of ResNet architecture. The authors indeed tried that and they call it the hybrid model in the paper. Now that we have seen what is VIT, let's see how they evaluate it. The first way they evaluate the proposed network is by standard classification. They first pre-train the network on the standard ImageNet and ImageNet 21K datasets, which is the superset of ImageNet with 14 million images. They then fine-tune on these datasets like Cipher 10, 100, Oxford Flowers, Oxford Pets for classification tasks and report accuracies. The second way VIT is evolu evaluated is on the Visual Task Adaptation Benchmark. This dataset is driven by the fact that knowledge should be transferable across tasks. For example, if the first task is to classify dogs and cats, and the second task is to classify elephants and horses, then you should be able to transfer knowledge across these two tasks. This dataset has 19 tasks like this grouped into natural, specialized, and structured tasks. These are the main results of the evaluation, so no surprises here. The bigger the model, the better the results. However, note that the huge VIT model takes 14 by 14 patches, but the large network only takes 16 by 16. Though the huge network does better most of the times, the title of the paper is 16 by 16 words and not 14 by 14 words. Another question that these re results trigger is what happens if the patch size is further reduced to say 8 by 8 or 4 by 4? But hang on, I'm just reading 2.5 thousand TPU days. Whoa, but it's still less compared to state-of-the-art methods like BIT and noisy student it is compared to. The size of the dataset somehow seems to play a major role for VIT. Clearly, for all the variations proposed, the performance is at its best when pre-trained with JFT, which is a 300 million images dataset uh, compared to ImageNet, which only has 14 million images. Also, note that the top one accuracy increases as we increase the number of samples in the JFT dataset. Now you may be wondering what is this JFT dataset? It is an in-house dataset owned by Google and yet we have an anonymous paper submission using the dataset. Interesting. Let's look at the dissection of the network from the results. A look at the principal components of the linear embedding layer shows learned filters similar to convolutional neural networks. You know we pass the input positions to the transformer during training. So for a given patch, the authors study how similar the position embeddings for that patch is to that of all other patches. This is interesting because it shows that it somehow learns to relate the patches using position embeddings. For example, it shows high similarity right at the center of a patch, that is from row 4 and column 4. Now the plot on the right is also interesting and proves that the strength of the transformers comes from multi-headed attention. It shows how deep the network pays attention to the input or in other words the attention distance. For example, even for a depth of just 5, the network learns to pay attention to pixels that are 120 pixels apart. This definitely does not happen in standard convolutional neural network architectures. Lastly, they show some attention maps for some images using what is called attention rollout proposed in this paper called quantifying attention flow in transformers. The attention maps indeed make a lot of sense. Now, it will also make a lot of sense if you can please subscribe and, as always, 
thank you very much for watching till the end and please check out these videos if you wish to learn about Stalecan and I'll see you next week.